Hello everyone. You remember my uh, previous video where I made um, this uh, adjustable rotisserie barbecue. Um, had plenty of views and comments. Um, I made this um, almost five years ago um, and it's now due for an upgrade. It's had a few, few changes made to it. Um, the original shells were um, plywood which didn't serve very well. Um, I mean, they, they deteriorated after a year or two. So I got decking, I had decking done um, in my garden. So I had some leftover decking. So I used the decking boards and made up shelves, as you can see. Um, the, the frame itself is brilliant, um, served its purpose. The drum, however, not so much. Um, it's now got um, holes coming through it where the um, steel's been eaten away. It's, it's common uh, for, soft, uh, for mild steel. Um, the grease, fat, um, ash, and uh, uh, moisture isn't really um, the best for mild steel. It rusts pretty quickly um, and it deteriorates, as you can see. So what I had was I had ash falling through. Um, I've been using foil um, at the bottom just to cover the holes up but really it needs replacing so I put my mind to what I might want um, and I've decided that I would have a stainless steel box made to sit inside the frame where the drum currently sits um, although in this uh, particular design I've got the, the, the drum bolted into the frame itself um, but I thought it might be easier if I could have a removable firebox. So I thought I'd, 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 I'd make up a, a design of a firebox, uh, which I've done already. And all that's going to do is the drum's going to come out. Um, I'll undo the, the bolts, take the drum out, and then the firebox is going to sit inside the frame. Uh, it'll have lips, uh, a lip all the way around, and the lip will basically sit on the frame itself. Um, that would be better simply because the stainless steel doesn't rust um, the the lip sitting on this frame will actually protect the frame itself um, obviously i'm going to treat all this clean it all off and repaint it um, so all the grease and moisture doesn't sit on the frame it'll sit on the um, the stainless steel uh, lip that sits on here which is then easily cleanable because the box will be removable every so often i can take the box out clean it out properly and then replace it um, all the other bits and pieces will then work as they do now. The lip itself, which is going to sit on this frame, is just going to be folded over these edges. So these um, holes basically uh, remain exposed so that my frame can, can go in, in and out um, just um, to make the height adjustable. The other thing I decided was um, I wanted to make the frame bigger because I was restricted to the size of lamb. If I was going, if if I was doing a whole spit roast, um, I found the lamb uh, had to be a specific size or smaller, which caused problems in itself because obviously then you've got to cater to a specific number of people, um, um, and I would have preferred um, something larger. So I thought what I would do is extend the frame. So what I'm actually going to do is actually have this frame cut from there at the bottom and on the other side. And extensions put in um, on all four sections. The same I'm, I will do to the uh, the, the adjustable uh, grill holder. Um, cut it in the middle and put extensions in to fit that um, frame there. The size I've opted for is 1.2 meters. This is currently sitting at about 885 um, millimeters in length. Um, the firebox I intend to make and the frame um, adjustment will make sure that um, I have a complete 1.2 length of the firebox and the frames uh, accordingly to, to, to house the firebox. So all in all I should be able to get a, a, a pretty large lamb or even a bigger animal um, uh, on the spit itself. The, the, the rig I have for the rotisserie can take anything up to 25 kilos, 
the drum that I have at the moment, the most, the biggest I've done is about 15 kilos. So I can add almost 10 kilos to the uh, power of the motor itself, which is, which is, uh, which is, you know, quite, quite um, uh, large in terms of an animal, an, an animal if I'm going to cook one. Um, I would have thought the best thing would be um, in terms of size, maybe about 18 kilos, 16 to 18 kilos, thereabouts. Uh, for the gatherings I have at my home, um, that would be plenty, I think. Um, I can't cater to very large numbers at my house, so although we have a, 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 a sizable garden, the, the traffic, uh, the human traffic, if I have more than that, would just wreck my house. So I think um, 15, 16 to 18 kilos would be the max. Um, so the, the motor will, will more than be um, uh, sufficient for that. Um, the spit and accessories I have can take um, a 1.2 um, firebox. So there's no problems there. So hopefully um, in this video, I'm gonna go through the various processes, um, order the firebox once that comes in, we'll, we'll touch base again. Um, and as I progress, I'll hopefully capture it on video. Um, so we'll, we'll be seeing you in a few minutes. Uh, for, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dismantle everything, um, take off the shelves on either end. They can be cleaned up and repainted. Um, and then I'm going to make my, I'm going to take the frame to uh, a friend of mine where we're going to slice it up, cut it up, put the extensions in, and then we'll, we'll see you there. The dismantling, pretty easy. Uh, fortunately, none of the uh, self-tapping screws I use to hold down the um, hold in the drum. Uh, none of them were rusted or seized up. They came across, uh, came apart quite easily. Well, they turned quite easily. Just give it a give it a simple little clean up. Hopefully, um, there should be no problem. The metalwork is in pretty good nick. Um, I think a bit of cleaning, and then we'll probably cut it down the middle, and then both sides. Put the extensions in and extend it. There's the old drum. Pretty battered. It's had a good innings though. Uh, plenty of barbecues on it. Um, served me well. Off to the scrapyard now. Okay, so I'm back again, and I've got uh, I've got my delivery of the firebox that I ordered. As I explained earlier. It's 1.2 meters in length. As you can see, my old grates, charcoal grates, I've laid in there. I'm not sure how I'm going to lay them in. I might just order another, another, another coal uh, grate uh, to put inside, custom size one. Uh, I might just use these. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, it's uh, 1.2 meters in length, stainless steel, two millimeters in thickness, um, folded lengthwise so it's got a fold along there along the bottom there folded into uh, its shape and then the ends cut out and then welded as you can see i got TIG welds on them pretty decent job very very pleased with it um, it's about 220 or 30 deep perhaps uh, without looking at my drawings, um, all I did was measure the, the, the deepest part of the drum and use that as a guide um, to have the dimensions for the box. But yeah, I should get a pretty large uh, animal in there if I needed to rotisserie a whole um, lamb or sheep even. But yeah, um, no holding back now. We'll just wait for the frame to arrive and then we'll put the whole thing together. See you in a bit. Hello everyone, we're back with the uh, refurb of the rotisserie barbecue that I made five years ago. We've um, come to the stage where I've received the frame back. Um, we had some modifications made. Um, as I spoke uh, about it earlier on, um, my original plan was to just um, have the frame extended um, to fit the firebox um, at 1.2 meters. The frame 
was extended to 1.2 meters but then uh, we had a slight problem in the way the the grill frame moves um, up and down because of the extension it was difficult for one person to do that job um, so we had to look at ways of how it could be done by one person because obviously we may not have um, somebody around all the time while we on the barbecue or while we are uh, doing a uh, full roast or something like that and if um, you know we have flare-ups and so on you know you need to move the grill quickly um, to, a, to a height that's not going to ruin the food that you're cooking um, and if there's nobody around it's difficult to do uh, on your own so we then decided to look at ways of um, raising the grill uh, frame up and down, um, you know, just by one person doing it. And a um, bit of research on the internet, and we came across um, the, uh, I'm not sure whether it's the right, right name for it, but it, it's called the Santa Maria style barbecue. And it's usually, um, around the region of, in countries like Argentina, um, even Mexico and places like that, um, where the grill is adjusted via two upright uh, posts and a winding mechanism at, at the top of that, which is what you see there. So this is what we ended up with. So what we've got here is the firebox fits perfectly well inside the frame, as you can see. The frame, the grill frame, if you remember, had uh, flat bars welded at the bottom there, which took the frame up and down. And we've got holes there where we had pins to uh, keep it at certain heights. Um, or lock it in place that's been cut away um, so we don't have that anymore instead what we have is a 300 uh, a 30 by 30 cross uh, box section welded onto the frame itself there as you can see and then we've got a, the next size up being used as a collar running up and down I can't show you um, how that works at the moment simply because it's not been hooked up. But basically this, this collar on either end would ride this bar up and down and ad that adjustment would be made by, by that. Obviously it needs to be hooked up with steel cable from there all the way down to these hooks here. This collar is welded to this frame here. So as you wind the bar, it would pull simultaneously on both sides. It would pull on the frame itself, raising it up and down. It's a brilliant way of actually micro adjusting the grill um, rather than having set um, adjustments according to the bar, the holes in the bars. Um, so it, it works brilliantly in that sense. Um, I have yet to test it, um, but for now, um, this is where we are at. Obviously, the, the frame needs now to be properly cleaned and painted. Um, I'm going to fit a proper shelf at the bottom. Plenty of room there to fit all the bits and pieces. Um, a side shelf, as I had before. Um, and this side, I will just have um, a single shelf rather than the, the wider shelf I had before, because obviously... Uh, I'm not going to have as much room um, in my uh, outdoor kitchen as I as I did before with this with, 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 the, with the smaller frame. So this is where we're at at the moment. Um, once I get the the winch uh, wired up um, and we've got the mechanism working properly, I'll come back and we'll we'll have a look at that. See you shortly. Okay, so the uh, the frame is now cleaned and painted as you can see I rubbed it down with uh, wire wool and paper cleaned it all off with white spirit on a rag and then gave it two or three coats of the uh, high heat barbecue paint 
it's still um, drying so I've not put it together as yet um, just wanted to show you uh, the the frame once it's been painted it looks like new obviously and uh, hopefully once I start putting it together we'll we'll come back and take a look at that see you in a bit so we're back with the rotisserie frame uh, assembled just the frame side just to see if the whole um, thing comes together nicely which it does um, I'll put the frame through the two uprights uh, the collars are riding nicely up and down I've wired up um, the winch as well as you can see with the steel stainless steel cable which goes uh, which loops around a washer we welded to the collar as you can see this steel cable then is um, clamped together it rises all the way up through a hole in the bar rides along the top of the bar comes down to a second at the opposite end a washer welded to the collar um, all this tension is more or less been removed so it's it's fairly fairly firm and basically the idea is that you remove the stop bar and you wind as such and you can see the frame where the grill would normally sit rise when you get to a particular height that you want you replace stop bar bear with me as I'm doing this with one hand and release and that's where it stops so obviously we cook it at that height I mean I, I wouldn't I, I don't think I would realistically raise it more than that above uh, above the coals but obviously uh, we've, we've still got a good 10 inches that we can r raise the frame by um, and to unwind or to lower the, the frame we just remove the stop bar and release to whatever height you want as you can see uh, and stops right at the bottom and there you have it perfect so glad it works as uh, as flawlessly as it does um, obviously I've, I've scuffed the paintwork a little bit in trying to get the whole thing together but that can always be we um, touched up later on if I needed to but obviously as, as time goes on um, you know the, the the paintwork does get a little bit worn but that's to be expected anyway um, but yeah it works perfectly well what's left now is replacing the shells that I originally had I'll refurbish them repaint them and replace them back Obviously, this end will have um, the one with the uh, trays, inset trays, and I'm going to reduce the, the shelf here to a single one just across to cover the frame. And this time around, I'm going to make a proper shelf at the bottom, which will be of a considerable size to put all my, my bits and pieces underneath for safe storage. Um, the next phase is to work out where my rotisserie is going to sit um, if you recall from the last um, video that I made the original one I had a, uh, a rotisserie um, uh, bracket on either side to hold the upright posts um, where the motor sits um, and, the, and the spit on top of that I'm thinking this time because of the length of the box um, and the, the ample space that I have there, I may actually fit two sets of uh, brackets to hold two um, spits, if you can call spits, or two spit across the length of the, uh, the rotisserie. So hopefully I'll have one just there and another one just there. And the purpose of that is um, if I want to do uh, rotisserie chickens, for example, um, I could place almost, I think, um, 12 chickens, six on each spit comfortably. Um, so I could do 12 chickens at one time. Um, and obviously, or split them up into, you know, uh, chickens on one spit and perhaps uh, cuts of meat on the other. Um, and have them uh, sort of cook. Uh, at various heights individually um, 
uh, and basically just utilize the, 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 the unit as best possible. So a little bit of investment in an additional kit, uh, rotisserie kit, uh, add, add, uh, add that to the one I already have. And hopefully um, have, that, have that all uh, hooked up. So hopefully when we come back, I should have the shelves made and hopefully um, in time for the uh, brackets to arrive and have them fitted as well. So, so far so good. And we'll see how that comes along shortly. So we're back with the second phase completed, which is the shelving for the rotisserie frame. As you can see, I've laid the, the new shelf at the bottom with left, leftover decking boards. Um, I did, or rather I reboarded my deck, made it a little bit larger as well last week um, and had quite a few offcuts, which came in useful for that. Looks really sturdy, it is sturdy and looks really nice, I think. Um, as I mentioned before, this shelf has been cut back by one board. Um, simply because the size of the frame now doesn't allow for a lot of room in my um, outdoor kitchen so I've cut that back by one board this side is exactly the way it was before however I had to replace that board uh, to allow for the new um, brackets uh, for the posts uh, that fit the rotisserie kit uh, as you can see, I've got two posts there, as I mentioned earlier, that I was going to have two um, spit um, allowance on this unit, um, as opposed to the, the one that was there before. Um, I've ordered the additional kit, which will come with two additional brackets, um, that, those two, um, and I'll fit them on the opposite side. Um, the, the two, um, although they look slightly offset, um, the, if I can just get the bracket. This is the bracket that actually sits on top of the post, like so. So the first spit will be sitting right there, and the second one about there. Um, so once the new kit arrives, I'll fit up the brackets. The holes have already been pre-drilled. So it's just a matter of fitting the brackets on at the opposite end. And once that's done, it should be a sight to see, I think. Quite unique in the sense I've not seen a rotisserie with two uh, allowance for two, two, two uh, spits to, uh, spit to run at the same time. So once I have that fitted up, we'll come back and take a look. So far, so good. It looks uh, looks very pleasant. See, so I'm back with the final part of this video. As you can see, I've got the the whole rig set up, and it's working perfectly fine. No problems at all. The brackets um, align perfectly well within the firebox. <coughs> Both spit. Uh, equally distanced from each other uh, to avoid any problems if they're both loaded. We don't want them interfering with each other as they're turning or being raised and lowered. One thing I'm really pleased about is my <coughs> grill grilling frame. I was worried that it may not lower uh, or it may, it may not be able to be raised or lowered if the posts were in the brackets but as you can see the frame is free of any restrictions and so you can move up and down freely. So I'm really pleased about that. I'm going to be using the, um, the old charcoal grates, <coughs> excuse me, for now anyway. I'll see whether or not to replace it and replace them later with, a, with one single unit. Shelf at the bottom of your tub, you know, I've got my accessories tray in there as well. Um, so everything's nice, neat and tidy. Overall, really pleased with the whole thing. No major issues, apart from the one with the um, having to make up uh, a mechanism to lower in 
and why I raised the, the, the frame. But other than that, it, the whole thing came together nicely, as it did on paper anyway. Um, really happy with it. I hope it inspires you to do something similar. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to know more about it, you can uh, post your comments. Hopefully they'll all be positive. And um, hopefully see you soon with another video.